Hi, I'm Kevin Greenway from Tenzig, and this is a recording of my joint webinar with Rob Beekmans of Citrix on Microsoft Teams optimization with Citrix and Tenzig. This was originally broadcast on Wednesday, May the 6th, 2020. Please post any questions or comments below, and I hope you enjoy this recording. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Uh, firstly, thanks all for taking the time out of your busy day to join this webinar. Uh, we hope you'll enjoy the, the content that uh, myself, Kevin, and, and Rob have, have put together. Um, I'll do a, a quick introduction to myself first before handing over to Rob. So I'm Kevin Greenway from Tenzig. Uh, I'm the CTO, and I've been with Tenzig now for eight years and experienced uh, in Citrix amongst other EUC and VDI products. I head up the R&D and support teams globally at Tenzig and work closely with sales and marketing amongst other teams here. Uh, prior to Tenzig, I should just quickly point out that I specialize in unified communications and have a really long potted history of teams um, or as it was known before it, um, Skype for Business and, and even before that, Office Communication Server and Live Communication Server. So yeah, I think back to about 2003 was when I first started um, work on this on this particular product so I'm really excited to see the evolution of it with Microsoft Teams and what it can do specifically with regards to uh, the topic today which is around Citrix optimization so Rob I'll, I'll hand over to you thank you you are the expert I hear so uh, I'll probably uh, send myself so for failure now <laughs> <laughs> so let's see so my name is Rob Bigmans I work at Citrix as uh, technical marketing architect I joined Citrix two years ago before that for 25 years or so. I used to be a consultant focused on end user computing. So uh, really glad to do this webinar now together with Kevin. Thank you, Rob. And you're definitely the EUC expert. <coughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> so some housekeeping before we kick off. Uh, so all participants will be muted during the webinar. Uh, but we'll open up uh, a Q&A at the end. So uh, please feel free to um, ask questions in the in the chat panel. And uh, as mentioned, we'll review those questions at the end and, and try and answer away as, as many as we can. And also, uh, finally, we are recording the webinar and uh, the marketing team will make this available um, on YouTube and probably through an email link so that uh, you can play back uh, both the content and the, uh, and the de demonstration uh, um, as you as you see fit. So uh, just to just to kick off, really, there's only I guess a small amount of slides from me in terms of non-technical content, and this is one of them. And I think uh, Rob, you you said the same from from yourself. Uh, so yeah, the bulk of the webinar is is uh, technical and demonstration. So a quick background on Tenzig for those who are not aware. We're solely focused as a thin and zero client vendor. And as mentioned, uh, we specialize in Citrix amongst other VDI and EUC products. Our company motto is that we make our product fit your environment and not the other way around. And this is more critical than ever in uh, such fast paced and, and changing times that we're seeing now. We're headquartered in Phoenix, Arizona with offices in the UK, uh, Australia and Germany. And we work uh, with value added partners and distributors um, predominantly in the EMEA and North America regions. We've been in business for 17 years, originating in the IBM terminal emulation market before sticking a stake in the, the VDI and server-based computing market back in 2009, which is the point that we rebranded ourselves as Tenzig. So uh, we work closely with Citrix and are a founding Citrix Ready partner which means we certify all Tenzig endpoints on the Citrix Ready Marketplace. And this is an exceptional program which allows Citrix partners to certify their products and give Citrix customers and partners assurance in selecting compatible products. Uh, where we're able to differ from competitors is that we are solely focused and our staff through sales and technical are skilled in Citrix through training and certification and take sales and support to the next level. Uh, we're a front runner in many Citrix innovations, uh, which included the recently introduced Citrix Ready Workspace Endpoint program, as well as being certified on our Zero and Thin clients for Skype for Business, the, specifically the optimization pack, and now as we are seeing with Microsoft Teams optimization as well. 
So I'll now hand over to Rob, who's going to talk about the relevance of Microsoft Teams in the workplace, both in and out of business, as well as breakdown uh, of the, uh, the architecture. Thanks, Kevin. Now I have control. You should have it now. Show my screen. No, I don't have to show my screen. I don't have the slides here, so. Do you want me to take the slides from here, yeah. Rob? Take the slides from there, yes. Okay. I'm really running it from the 10 clients, so I don't okay. have hope. <clears throat> Yeah, thank you. So for many years, I have a few slides. I have a few slides uh, that are a little bit marketing and then we dive into the technical part. Um, so first, a couple of slides of this. Uh, for many years already, yeah, we were slowly moving towards a new modern workforce where modern workers work from home more often. And if you look at our marketing team, I work in a marketing team, we are spread out over three continents uh, and numerous countries and all interacting, but we're all working from home. We always worked from home. And even though we're all on the path to working from home already for years then, and no, no one could expect that this, that working from home became the standard. Uh, it took a virus to make work from home the new standard. And employees right now, they need 24 seven access to devices and resources. Uh, work from home has become the only way to work. And Citrix, Microsoft, and then Zig have been partners for years in enabling employees access to productivity, communication, and collaboration tools. Next slide. So Microsoft Teams is growing fast. It's, it's the fastest growing business app in Microsoft history. Uh, it's giving the users a platform to chat, meet, share files. Everybody knows that and work in Office 365. In December, Microsoft had uh, 20 million daily active users in uh, Teams, and that grew because of the crisis we are in to uh, 44 daily users in March and soared even to 77 million users uh, in May. And it's actually so explosive that even competitors to Teams, uh, such as Slack, had publicly mentioned uh, in the Slack Q3 earning report last year that they expected to see Teams hit 50 million users in the next six months and 100 million in the next year. That's how times have changed. We're almost there. And Citrix and Microsoft have a long partnership. We have helped optimize delivery of Microsoft solutions in a virtual environment for years. Skype for Business was one of the most popular requests from enterprises. And currently we see there are more than 800,000 daily active users accessing Skype for Business through Citrix. With Teams release, we partnered with Microsoft to be the first to market optimization for Teams in virtual environments. And right now we have dozens and dozens of thousands of weekly calls being made, peer-to-peer -peer conference. Exact numbers I cannot share right now, but we will come out to that pretty soon. Yeah. yeah. So why optimize Teams with Citrix? One of us, because you know, we are the only vendor today that optimizes Teams for virtual instances, and if you need it, well, that might be a good reason already, but there's also benefits from both the organizational side as a whole and the end user benefit as well as administrative benefits. You get centralized control, so you manage and deliver teams alongside your existing personal apps and desktops. You can ensure security, uh, so you can store chat logs, file exchanges, and other data in the cloud and not on the device. Uh, scalability goes up as the load of running Teams with audio and video is offloaded to the endpoint device, leaving room for more users in your virtual environment. And you can use what you have. Teams is part of Microsoft 365, so you can use um, you can use your existing investment in Microsoft to deploy Teams through Citrix. Yep, that was the trigger. Unlike uh, Skype for uh, Skype real-time optimization pack, Teams optimization is different with a built-in workspace app media engine. So you don't have to support, uh, install anything else on the endpoint. It will support all platforms. Windows now is being first, but then Linux, we're working on Linux, and next will be Mac, iOS. And just like Skype real-time optimization pack, we are optimizing audio and video, but now we're also optimizing screen sharing, single point authentication, and signaling to improve reliability and usage. And also different from Skype real-time optimization, there's a studio policy per user 
that will allow you to control the feature uh, more granular. Yeah, certified. We are the only ones certified right now. Microsoft will come out in some time. So let's take a look high level architecture of what's going on with the optimization. I have, I think, eight or nine slides and all the steps we're going through. So how does Teams optimization actually work? So a user uh, starts Teams, launches Teams in a virtual desktop. We'll show that later on also. And then, uh, next slide. Yeah, uh, Teams authenticates to Office 365. The tenant policies are pushed down to Teams clients and uh, the relevant turn and six signaling channels is being relayed. Then Teams detects it's running uh, in, a, in, the, in a VDA and makes an API call to Citrix JavaScript, which is embedded in Teams. Uh, the HTX WebRTC JavaScript opens a secure WebSocket connection to the WebSocket service.exe running on the, the VDA. So it's a 127.01 uh, call over port 9002. And the WebSocket service.exe uh, runs a local system account of session zero, performing a TLS termination and a user session mapping and spawning WebSocket agent.exe, which now runs inside the user session. And then WebSocket agent.x now initiates a gen generic virtual channel by calling into the Citrix HTX browser redirection service, that's CTX service host.x. A lot of processes. And then the web, um, the workspace app, uh, it's a WFICA 32.x, that's the HTX engine. It spawns a new process called ADX Teams, ADX Teams.x, which is the new web RTC engine used for Teams. ACX Teams.x and Teams.x now have a two-way virtual channel uh, file. So now they can start processing multimedia requests, which is important. And then if peer A or user A clicks on call button, so then Teams co communicates with the team services in Azure, and an end-to-end -end, end -end signaling path is established with peer B or user B. Teams will ask ADX Teams for a series of supported call parameters, so codecs, resolutions, all those things. This is known as an SDP offer, a uh, session description protocol offer, uh, which are then relayed through the signaling path to team services in Azure and from there to the other peer. And once the SDP offer answer, it's a single pass negotiation and the ICE connectivity checks, that's NAT and firewall things, are completed uh, as the TP media will flow between AJX teams at X and the other peer or Office 365 conference service if it's a meeting. And with that, we see the whole process. Yeah, thank you. I want to just hand it back to Kevin now. Thanks, Rob. Thanks for that uh, overview there. Um, so, yeah, just coming back uh, onto the Tenzig Citrix Ready endpoints now. Um, so, um, and just really just quickly to discuss the Citrix Ready endpoint. So we have a range of zero clients plus thin clients based on Linux and Windows. All of our endpoints are Intel and AMD based and include enterprise free centralized management via the Tenzig Manager. Uh, we have a range of teams optimized Citrix Ready endpoints, uh, one of which is our 6010Q, which is the, the second one uh, on the left there. Um, and this is actually what we'll be, Rob and I will be demonstrating the calls on today. Um, we also offer a flexible demo program for anybody wanting to trial our products uh, in, in your Citrix uh, environments. So moving on to the Citrix requirements now. So uh, let me just take you through the requirements. So the Teams optimization is supported for both on-prem deployments and also Citrix Cloud. Um, it's also supported across both server and desktop based operating systems or VDAs, virtual delivery agent. And that ranges from server 2012 R2 uh, through to server 29. And on the desktop OS, uh, Windows 10, uh, ranging from 1607 through to 1909. A minimum of 1906.2 is required for the delivery controller and uh, VDA. Um, and as Rob said, unlike the Skype for Business optimization before it, or the pack, sorry, before it, the Teams optimization is now integral to the VDA 
installation and also as we'll see in the workspace app so this makes a much more simplified uh, de deployment and i know that this was much asked for uh, back in the skype for business uh, days so great great news um, the only point to note really is that if you're deploying the vda through cli as opposed to the gui uh, be careful not to exclude that bcr underscore x64 uh, msi as rob mentioned in the uh, architecture that uh, that makes up uh, part of the virtual channel required for the HTX Teams process and also the, the VDA side uh, components. On to Microsoft Teams requirements. Um, really a few key things to pick out from here. Ensure you're using a minimum of 1.2003.1357, which includes the appropriate APIs that Rob mentioned. Um, but we do highly recommend that you use a minimum really of 1.3004461 uh, because this has kind of evolved uh, some of the features and operation sets as, uh, as, the, as the deployment's gone more wide scale. Um, then from there, it really, the deployment depends on whether you're deploying to non-persistent or persistent VMs, et cetera. So for non-persistent VMs, uh, it's recommended to install the MSI version of Teams since this does not perform auto update uh, so there's an uh, an example of installing via the msi file on the slide as well as in the uh, citrix docs that you can see sourced there below uh, so that's for non-persistent vms for persistent you can choose either the msi or exe dependent on your auto update requirements and finally if you're deploying teams in conjunction with app layering just pay attention to those reg registry keys there, which need to be created uh, prior to installing Teams. Um, so that's the Teams part. On the Workspace app requirements and features, we'll do a quick breakdown of Windows and Linux here. So uh, in Windows, the minimum version is 1907, but recommended is the 2002 version. Uh, Windows supports specifically, as Rob mentioned, audio and video optimization, which is based on a client fetch and render model, uh, and plus also screen sharing, which again wasn't part of the Skype for Business optimization pack before it. The Citrix Ready Endpoint program requires uh, specifically 720p video encoding. So that's the, uh, the, the, the webcam that's connected to the endpoint. Uh, so do be careful in deploying this newer Citrix workspace app for Windows onto older and less powered thin clients and low powered endpoints if you're looking to leverage the, uh, the Teams optimization. Um, so our 4510, 5810Q, 6010Q and 7010Q, and wow, what a mouthful, um, are certified as of April 2020 with, with more to follow. Um, for Linux, Teams optimization is included as an EAR, early access release, with Citrix Workspace app for Linux 2004. And this version currently supports audio optimization and is available on request for our 6048 QC, which is already Citrix ready approved. So uh, ultimately, you're, if you are after that for Linux, then uh, speak, to, speak to us at Tenzig um, to provide that for the, uh, the Tenzig approved uh, Linux and zero clients. In terms of network requirements, there are a number of audio and video codecs supported via Teams optimization, and essentially the HTX Teams process, which which Rob men mentioned, uh, runs on the endpoint and should really be treated uh, be treated as a Teams client or endpoint. Um, so, the, in the next slide, we'll, we'll cover that in more detail. But as far as the codecs are concerned, for audio, uh, there's Opus, G711, and G722. And for video calls, we have H264 and VP9 um, as, as encoding codecs for the, the webcams. Uh, the Teams client, and specifically during call establishment, uh, the preferred audio and video codec are negotiated dependent on the type of call. So for example, Opus and VP9 are preferred for peer-to-peer -peer calls, uh, whilst G722 and H264 are preferred for conferences and meetings. Um, another thing to be aware, specifically on the video codecs, is that VP9 has more CPU cost for encoding versus H264, 
um, but requires less bandwidth. Um, and as you'll see later, whilst the the Teams process or HDX Teams can negotiate those video codecs, there are ways to uh, make those codecs mandatory. Again, if it suits you that you're quite happy to expense more CPU for encoding, or you want to um, save bandwidth, for example. And it's also important to state that in addition to peer-to-peer -peer calling, the endpoint will also communicate directly with Office 365 media processes and transport relay, um, for example, for Teams meetings and or where direct communication with peers cannot be established. So the thing I'd really hammer home here that I saw uh, predominantly with the Skype for Business optimization pack was that um, in proof concepts and early deployments, it was it wasn't taken necessarily always into account that the endpoint in effect became a Skype for Business client or now a Teams client in the fact that it needed to have network connectivity to make those calls. So again, treat the endpoint like it's running the Teams uh, executable locally. Um, and with that, network um, requirements, um, ultimately as with any real-time application the network is going to determine the performance of, of the calls as much as the the spec of the VDA and the endpoint so as mentioned it's highly important to consider both the VDA and the endpoint as, as I've pointed out multiple times um, and with that um, do recommend that's again covered in the documentation both for Microsoft Teams and Citrix documentation uh, of running the Skype for Business Network assessment tool, um, WAN users and home users especially. So, as Rob's touched on, we've seen a you know a huge conversion in home home users uh, with obviously the the, the global situation. Um, so, for example, with home users, uh, if they're using VPNs, ensure that you're using things like split tunneling to force Teams calls to go directly out as opposed to traversing through through the uh, the VPN tunnels. So ultimately, the endpoints need to have the most direct path to the peers or the Office 365 media processor servers to provide the, the greatest quality uh, of audio and video calls. The configuration, once we've covered all of those requirements, is really very, very straightforward. Um, so as long as you're following the guidelines in terms of the minimum and, re and recommended requirements, uh, there is essentially a, a MS Teams redirection policy that you'll find under Citrix Studio, and that has to be set to allowed. And as Rob mentioned, that can be applied to either users or delivery groups, etc. Um, it is allowed by default, so unless anybody has actually changed that to prohibited, um, then no real reason to, uh, to to change that, but obviously do check it. And on the VDA, there is also an, accomp an accompanying registry key, as we'll see during the demonstration, which uh, can be selectively enabled and disabled, as we'll see later. But as again, as we'll touch on through the demo, unless you're using it for testing, really leave it alone, because the purpose of the key is to establish that the APIs and the virtual channels are established to ultimately provide that op optimization is uh, is achievable. So now we get to the, uh, the 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 cool and interesting part, and the part where me and Rob are crossing our fingers to hope that uh, the demo works as flawlessly as it did yesterday when we were both sat uh, drinking coffee and talking about the world and. Yeah, so let's hope the demo gods are, are with us again today, Rob. So just yeah, to, <laughs> yeah, fingers <laughs> crossed. So just to summarize uh, what we have set up. So firstly, there's me in, in the UK. Uh, there's Rob, who's, uh, we worked out yesterday is roughly about 386 kilometers as the, the bird flies or 20 milliseconds away, roughly between the UK and, and Holland as far as network latency. And we're both connecting to Citrix Cloud, um, and uh, and with that, um, our VDAs are also uh, hosted within uh, Microsoft Azure, and they're both in the US East Coast region, um, yeah. which we worked out again yesterday is roughly five and a half thousand kilometers from the UK, or 100 milliseconds of latency, and for Rob, five thousand nine hundred kilometers 
and uh, 110 milliseconds of uh, of latency. So I think hopefully, as we can see from this uh, from this overview, it should make a really cool demo, assuming it works, and uh, we should be able to see the the, the real impact of uh, Citrix Teams optimization. So. What we're going to do is essentially two calls. Uh, the first call is going to demonstrate a non-optimized call using HDX real-time compression. So this is a technique where the webcam and USB headset or preferred audio device, which are connected to the thin clients at both mine and Rob's location, are forwarded from the endpoint to the VDA, uh, but they're forwarded in a compressed virtual channel, the HDX real-time compression. Um, virtual channel that you see there. So when I call Rob, the authentication and signaling will originate from the team client that runs in the VDA uh, within Azure, and again, as we said, hosted in, in Azure. And at the point Rob answers the call, uh, the voice and audio traffic will route, as we can see, uh, via my endpoint towards the VDA using HDX real-time compression. The media will then traverse between the team's clients running in Azure before routing back to Rob's endpoint again using HTX real-time compression. So this, as you're probably aware, is known as the, uh, the hairpin or the trombone effect. And this importantly results in latency of around two, 210 to 230 milliseconds, which will have an impact on voice and audio delay. And again, we saw that yesterday. Now, it's difficult to really be able to show that uh, in the demonstration today, but another factor uh, that we can show is the compression and overall quality of the video specifically, but also the audio, which again, will be difficult to show you here. Um, and also, as we'll see during the demonstration, the majority of the load is focused on the VDA as opposed to the endpoint. Uh, with the high amount of bandwidth required between the, the endpoints and the VDAs with the fact that we're remoting the audio and the video and also the graphics in the VDA. Uh, so forgive the thumbs here, but it ultimately, as, we, as we're pointing out, this is a, a non-optimized call. So the second call uh, will then make use of the optimized mode using the CTX MTOP virtual channel. Uh, so prior to calling Rob in this mode, uh, the virtual channel is already established, which in turn has the job of enumerating the audio and video devices connected to our endpoints um, towards the team client running in the VDA. And that makes it possible for me and Rob to use Teams as we ordinarily would uh, to choose our preferred webcam and our preferred audio and video device, even though they're, they're physically connected to our, our local endpoints, uh, sort of five and a half to 6,000 kilometers away. So uh, at the point I call Rob, again, the signaling is performed between the two Windows 10 VDAs running Teams, but also the HTX Teams process running on both endpoints is going to negotiate the preferred path and audio video devices, as we saw in, uh, in Rob's earlier slide. So at the point Rob uh, clicks answer, our video um, and audio will establish preferably a direct path between both peers or worst case, a transport relay local to our physical endpoint location. So the result of this is uh, firstly massively reduced latency. So we've gone down from over 200 milliseconds to 25 milliseconds, and our audio and video is now being encoded and decoded directly on the endpoints. So the result of that is that audio and video delay is reduced, um, and our aud audio and video quality improves due to the fact that we're not compressing and decompressing multiple times and using native teams codecs and finally the the bulk of the load as we'll see is going to be shifted from the vda to the endpoint and uh, network traffic between the endpoint and vda will also be reduced significantly so thanks to marketing a big thumbs up from the uh, from the incredible hulk Uh, so thanks for Rob for providing this uh, slide here. I think uh, I can't remember if this was it's me yesterday or last week when we were preparing the content. Um, but this is really just to demonstrate the, the two modes, not necessarily the quality of the video, but the workload that on the left here, we can see there is quite a significant load on the VDA, which is the, the uh, point that we're measuring. 
uh, so that's the non-optimized call and on the right hand side where we can see this significantly less load on the VDA that is the uh, the, the optimized call and uh, this particular screenshot again is just to give a demonstration uh, that on the left hand side the video is basically being encoded using the HDX real-time compression so you can see it's quite heavily compressed with the the text uh, versus the right hand side which is the optimized call where you can see uh, you, the effect of effectively a 720p encoded video I think using VP9 as it as it was at the time so we finally get to the point of the demo um, and at this point let me uh, let me hand over to you Rob so that you can um, show the effect of me uh, calling you and also you can go through the stats of the VDA for both of those calls so here we go okay so you can see my screen yep okay so I have workspace Citrix workspace this is a Citrix managed desktop uh, desktop that I connect into I have it open already um, I don't know if you recognize this. We should be here now, but we can't be here. So that's why we do a virtual <laughs> webinar. Um, we've set the, right, the key that you could also set with a policy. Yeah? You could set the Microsoft Teams uh, uh, optimization policy with Citrix. Uh, we've done it manually here. So I set the key to zero so that it's not optimized. And if I look in Teams, I can show that it's not an optimized uh, running teams instance right now it should say uh, citrix acx optimized if it's optimized so if i now get a call from yeah. a user here we go he's going to mute himself but of course uh, otherwise we have some issues with the uh, with the sound so you can see i hope that you can see it clearly in the, the webinar we can recognize him, but it's just because we know how he looks like, but it's quite pixelated. It's uh, it's not as clear as you would uh, would want to. And if you would have to work with Kevin a whole day long, you have to look at this and it, you would get a headache, not because of Kevin, but because of, uh, uh, of the picture. So let me open up, uh, oh, it's uh, a bit far. So here we see we have quite a lot of performance already uh, issues. So if we look at the uh, normal performance then the cpu activity is quite high already and it's just running teams there's nothing else running here than just teams uh, let me go into here so this is the graphics uh, process you see it's also 19 percent going up and down it depends on what he's doing on the other side and i'm not going to ask him to wave all the time but if he moves more then this is going up more uh, because it has to do a lot more so this in total uh, the process the, the the thin client now which is quite a powerful thin client it's the newest one that they added to the citrix ready program it's now really busy and that's the problem with a non-optimized the picture is uh, the the image is pixelated and we have a lot of uh, resource usage on the client side so shall we hang up the call and then we go for optimize one. <clears throat> and for the optimized one, I first we we're, we're, we're doing this a little bit then. Um, we're going to do it by hand. So I'm going to change this one to one. <clears throat> it doesn't always work on the first time that you start Teams. There might be some processes running in the back, so might have to restart Teams again to to get this uh, optimized if you set a policy and the user logs in then it's a totally different environment but we are just playing around with it now it's not optimized yet i was too fast <clears throat> and patience is not one of my uh, the things that i'm known for now it's optimized so citrix acx optimized so now we have an optimized uh, image so ready for the call rob yeah sure 
<clears throat> I'll mute my uh, audio again. So now we see, I, I think it's quite clear. You see, uh, uh, he's flipping a little bit to the video now, but you see a way better image. Don't know why he's doing, why this is happening. <clears throat> and then again, if we look at um, performance here, then we see we are at 4%, so I can go to this one. You see a, a, a real difference in performance on the on the VDA side. And the Citrix, uh, the, the Citrix graphics process, I would like to click on it, that it's it's not used at all because the, the, uh, everything is offloaded and Teams is running uh, uh, smoothly and not using anything. So this this is the optimal situation because now you could use other applications also in the VDA and uh, also the, the scalability of the server environment would go up because the whole process is offloaded and you could have, handle more uh, desktops or users on the same host. I think this is a perfect fix, and if you would have to work like this together, we work together to to, uh, to work on this webinar. It, it, it's it's easy to look at. It's just like uh, like like he's sitting in uh, on the other side of the desk for me now. So that's that's it, it's it's not tiring on the eyes. So okay, uh, Kevin, can, can you show how it looks like on the endpoint side what you capture? But first, let me take the control back. I just killed the call to reduce the the echo, and then I'll um, I'll take the presenter slot back so I can show you uh, some of the endpoint. Okay, so hopefully you can see my screen again. Yeah. Okay, so as Rob said, what I want to show you now is the equivalent of what happened with both of those calls um, with both modes. Now, to make it easy so that we didn't switch um, the, the screen with each call, we pre-recorded some of these stats yesterday. So the first thing that, uh, that I want to show is the endpoint as it was yesterday when we were using the first call. So the HDX real-time compression, again, which is where things are forwarded from the endpoint uh, to the VDA. So you can see the um, what we're measuring here is three processes. We have the, the overall processor, which is the, the item in blue. So it's roughly averaging sort of just below 50%. And then we have the WFICA32, which is the receiver process, which, uh, which is, it, it says here it's roughly around 25, but because it's a quad core, we divide that by, by four effectively. And then the HDX Teams process that in this mode is idle because of the fact that uh, the VDA is doing the bulk of the processing. Now, it's also important to say that um, the thin client is also running the webinar as well as the PowerPoint. So the processor is probably higher than it would be in a, in a normal scenario. And I think it's also important just to say that during that demo, the overall video quality would have been impaired a little bit with, for example, the frames per second by the fact that we're also remoting that or webcasting that through the, the GoToWebinar. Um, so just, just to make that point clear. So that's the HDX real time. Then if we compare that to the Teams optimization, uh, you can see the overall effect here where, as we saw in the VDA, the load there reduced down, but in, in Flip, that's increased the load on, on the uh, thin client in this case. So the overall processor went up to roughly around 80%. Uh, the WFICA process actually went down, and that's because, as Rob said, the graphics process has reduced significantly with the fact we're no longer remoting that from the VDA to the endpoint. And the HDX Teams process here, now, although it looks like it's 100%, it actually isn't. Again, it's the way the performance monitor works with the fact that individual processes are divvied up by the number of cores. So you can see the average of the HDX Teams process is 208, um, maximum of that would be 400. So roughly around 50% uh, to encode that, uh, that that video and the audio. And that uh, for that particular call was encoded in VP9, uh, which as we 
touched on is 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 more expensive to the CPU than H.264, and um, and again also encodes the uh, the audio as well. So that's the the graphs. Now the other thing that I want to show is is a Wireshark trace. Now the Wireshark is a tool that hopefully a few of you have, have used before, and it's very useful. Um, for this particular demo with the fact that we can see the shift in network um, connectivity uh, and network transport with the two modes. So the first trace that we have here is uh, the one that's saved as HTX real time and the uh, the voice traffic as it is, still loading the file, but the voice traffic as it is would ordinarily be RTP um, or UD, on UDP. So if we just filter on UDP we should find, and again, it's a little bit slow just because of the size of the trace, but the UDP uh, really would contain the RTP, which in this particular mode is not the voice traffic, it's just other regular UDP traffic. Now, um, if we, because this is HTX real time, the connectivity between the thin client and the VDA, uh, because it's secure, is done over TCP uh, 443. So if we do a filter on TCP port 443, and again, wait for the file to filter, um, that will basically show all of the traffic between the endpoint and the VDA in that mode. Now, what we can do with this to assess how much bandwidth is used is we can either look at the capture file properties. Um, so we can look at uh, the, the displayed mode here. Uh, now that's actually 12 megabits, but if I also do a filter on the IP address that uh, we were connected to, and because I can't remember what it was, I made a note of it earlier. So we can filter specifically on TCP 443 and also the IP address of uh, what we're using for Citrix Cloud. And uh, again, if we do capture file properties, we can see roughly the uh, the amount of bandwidth that is being transmitted for that particular session. So it's roughly around four and a half meg. And we can also use uh, the IO graph to filter, if we like, that, that same particular traffic. So again, these are the ones that I created earlier. Um, so we use the same display filter that we had in the Wireshark trace and we're displaying in uh, in bits. So again, you can see that as per the capture file properties, it's roughly around the four and a half, four and a half meg. Now, uh, if we then close that particular trace and open up the Teams optimization trace, this will contain both TCP 443, but also the RTP uh, traffic with the fact that again, this was the Teams optimized call. Now, again, this is covered in the Teams optimization guide, uh, which, uh, which I'm linking to uh, in, the, uh, in the webinar. But uh, you, the first thing you have to do is to decode that because it's UDP and it's secure. You have to decode that as RTP traffic so that you can start to drill down on exactly what it is. Now, again, Typically, you're looking for port 3480. Um, the, the range of ports were covered in the webinar, um, but that's typically the one of the port ranges that's used. So if I hit on that UDP packet and I right click and go to decode as, um, I can set the current here to be RTP and I can save that. And that then decodes those packets as RTP packets where what I can do is I can inspect those packets to look at things like the payload type. So the payload type here is dynamic RTP type 100, which I'll come back to later. But we've also got this particular packet here, which is payload type uh, G722. So these in effect are both the audio and the video, which are being transmitted between the endpoint. And again, if we want to, we can then inspect the approximate amount of bandwidth that's used for both the Citrix, the essentially the graphics, uh, and also the audio and the video codecs. So some of the things that I can do with this, with the payload type here, I can uh, decode, sorry, not that one, I can apply that as a filter, and that gives me the filter 
to filter in this case on G722 if I wanted to change that to 100 which uh, which is the video codec I can filter on those and again I can then either use the capture file properties to work out the displayed property as well as the IO graphs to break that down into much much more so uh, so this one is going to be our uh, Citrix traffic so again let's just deselect these so we can show each one to begin with so the first one if we go back to it is that one there or that's probably the wrong IP address now these were taken at different times so the IP address uh, change with each uh, and we'll also change that from packets to bits so we can see roughly again this this would need to be drilled down more into the IP address but you can see that um, the the average number of bits reduces significantly on TCP 443 and then if we bring into play let's take that out of context for a moment and then bring in the RTP type 100 which again we know is the uh, the video and again let me just change it to bits as opposed to packets so again we can see roughly that the video once we established that during the trace was about 1.25 megabits and then if we wanted to we could then show just the uh, just the voice as well which is about 150k looking at that as a as a as an average probably slightly less so that gives you a, a good breakdown you can see that we've split um the traffic as it was in the hdx real-time compression into essentially three three different types of packets um, but also we've reduced that as well with the fact that the, the video is now encoded natively uh, for the, the video call. The audio is encoded directly and subsequently the traffic between the endpoint and the VDA has dramatically reduced with the fact that we're no longer encoding and decoding that entire screen as we were in the HDX real-time compression. So that makes significant um, savings in, in load as, as well as network uh, transport as well. Now, the one thing just to finish off with, uh, if I can find it, is the web R RPC file. So I'll refer to this in the slide, but this is a this is a very useful debug log that um, that runs on the endpoint to firstly uh, show you which which uh, audio devices and webcams are available on on the endpoint, and also how you're actually encoding the video. But as I as I've captured out of here. This is also good to um, map essentially what those RTP profiles are uh, that we saw in the Wireshark. So in the Wireshark, if we go back to it in the RTP payload, we have type 100, which is actually a dynamic RTP. And um, then in the G722, that was payload type nine. So some of them are the, the RTP decoding calculates automatically but for the dynamic ones as we saw with h264 to figure out whether it is h264 or maybe vp9 you can use this particular log file to filter out the rtp maps which so again this example here is rtp map colon colon 9 so if i do a um, a control f and do uh, v, vp9 uh, or let's do So here's some of the other dynamic maps that are available in the log file to again ultimately track down which codecs in use. So that's a really good log file, and again I do refer to that um, in the um, in the PowerPoint. But just to quickly show you where it where it lives before we switch over to Q and A, it's uh, by default it's in the C slash users uh, administrator in this case because I'm signed in as local admin. Uh, then app data local uh, temp 
and then HDX Teams. And then for each call that's generated using the, the media engine, uh, they're basically captured in a separate folder. So the call that we made during the webinar um, is available in here. And uh, you can see the same sort of context that it's grabbing the, the resources and it's choosing, as we establish the call, it's going to show us the RTP traffic during that call. So really useful for measuring you know, what sort of codecs might be preferred for your environment for both audio and video, as well as potentially troubleshooting any, any troublesome calls uh, that you might have uh, along the way. Um, so hopefully that, uh, that, that demonstration was, was useful for you. Uh, just gonna quickly uh, recap on, um, on any optimization and troubleshooting and anything that I probably didn't cover during the demo. Uh, so the first thing is the Citrix Workspace app for Windows includes a performance estimator uh, from Citrix Workspace app 1912 or 2002. And what this does is it, is it inter interrogates the, uh, the hardware to figure out what the correct mode is as far as it's concerned to be able to encode. Again, 720p, VP9 is quite expensive for CPU. So for some of the weaker endpoints, it will encode at a much higher resolution. So you can override that uh, with registry keys, and that is covered um, in the Citrix documents, as, I, as I've referred to here. And uh, as Rob covered, the, there is the registry key in the VDA where you can toggle the optimized and the, the non-optimized mode. Um, do pay attention to those processes on both the VDA and the endpoint. So as we covered, it's really ctxgfx.exe and teams.exe on the VDA. And then on the endpoint, it's WFICA32 and HTX teams. And then for your wire sharks, uh, you can capture the um, secure RTP using Wireshark using those techniques mentioned. But they are, again, as, as, as said, covered uh, in the Citrix doc there. Um, and the RTP payloads that I covered, they're also covered in that uh, web link at the bottom there. So hopefully lots of useful resources for you. And, uh, and that really takes us to the, uh, the end of the webinar. Uh, was, was there anything you, like, you would like to add, Rob, before we uh, shift to oh, Q&A? I, I would like to say that I now really know who the expert is. So. I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> Good, great uh, team effort, and thankfully the the uh, the, the demo worked. Well, hey, yeah, yeah, the good. demo gods, the demo gods were with us. So we'll now we'll now open up to any questions that you may have. I think we'll just leave it a, a couple of minutes for for anybody to ask away on those questions. We do have one question that's come in. Uh, it's, we are using uh, LTSR 715. Uh, is there any support for Teams optimization in the 715 LTSR? Um, I don't know if, if you want to answer that, Rob, or if you want me to answer it. Uh, uh, 715 LTSR, they, it supports ACX uh, real-time compression, but it's not optimized. So 1912 uh, and beyond is uh, recommended. Great, thank you. Uh, when is GA for Linux? Uh, so the GA for Workspace app for Linux um, is the, well, the 2004 version is GA as far as the, the Workspace app version. Uh, that includes, as mentioned, the EAR for audio. Um, at the moment, I, I can't share uh, anything on when the GA uh, will, will be due, but we do have that um, available to provide out to uh, to any customers and prospects and uh, and it and it's our job and Citrix's job to filter back feedback and ultimately is that the more that that gets pushed out I guess the quicker we can reach GA I don't know if there's anything that you want to um, add no to that's, that. it's, that's that's it's a roadmap thing so you have to talk to that rep and yeah it's yeah well I can end so yeah they can get the information if they uh, they can sign an NDA and talk to the rep and it's also, I saw a question about a trial come in um, for Citrix. If you want to trial this, then uh, if a Citrix trial license, uh, visit 
the knowledge base article CTX one two six three eight seven. So that's one two six three eight seven. Or contact your rep. Uh, then you can get trial licenses and uh, test this out. It's available for every version of CVET except the standard version. Yeah. Thank. Thanks, Rob. We have another question in. Uh, you were talking about this way of optimization on a VDI. Would it work the same on a shared full public desktop like that? And I think um, I think we actually talked about this part briefly yesterday, Rob, where you you mentioned potentially about uh, RAM usage on a on a, a shared mm -hmm. desktop. That that's the that, that's the challenge that you have to watch your uh, uh, your RAM usage uh, there because if uh, you only have that, that that much available, but it works. You just have to scale it uh, properly and and do testing. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for that. Um, uh, then there's another question on which model would you prefer to use in the case of Citrix in combination with uh, with Teams. Uh, so the the essentially the models that I mentioned, uh, the 4510, the 5810Q, the 6010Q, and the 7010Q. I think ultimately, if you're looking to leverage, uh, you know, 720p or higher, and just to note, 720p is is currently the maximum that's supported at the moment. Then I would I would definitely recommend uh, something like the six the 6010Q, uh, just because of the fact that again, as as you saw, there is quite a lot of overhead that is required to encode um, at 720p. If you if you're looking um, if you're looking at probably a little bit lower than that, like 360p or windowed calls, then uh, you, you you can for sure uh, look at any of those other models that I mentioned. But again, you, you really have to factor in the fact that if you if you're doing Teams optimization only, then great. But if you're also looking to do other things like 3D and CAD or or uh, you know HDX 3D Pro, those types of things, yeah, you do need to have the the headroom. Uh, we are running this on a 6010Q. I'm I'm also running a 6010Q, and it runs beautifully. That's that's perfect client uh, to run this on. Yeah, yeah, I, I agreed. Thank you. Uh, then there's another question: Is it possible to receive this webcast offline? So yeah, uh, we will be um, we will be sharing this recording, and uh, it will go up on on YouTube. Uh, I'll be passing the recording shortly to the marketing team. And they can do their arty, arty things with it and, and upload it shortly. Um, and I think that's about it. That, that seems to be it for the, uh, the, the questions. So again, firstly, thanks for everybody for joining the webinar. Um, really thanks to you, Rob. I've had a really good time over the last couple of weeks working with you and sharing, same, same. <laughs> sharing what's going on in Holland, what's going on in the UK, and it's been a, a, a welcome change from everything else that's going on in the world. So I've, I've really enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you. I think next time is in a pub and... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah let's, uh, <laughs> let, let's cross our fingers. I, yeah, I really hope so. So uh, yeah, thanks everybody and, and, and thanks Rob and uh, see you soon. Cheers. Cheers. Bye. <laughs>